Well, hello there! I hope you are here because you want to learn how to play this amazing instrument called Native American Flute, or NEF for short. Lesson 1. What is a Native American Flute and how does it work? So, the Native American Flute belongs to a family of wind instruments called Fipple Flutes, just like the recorder and the Irish tin whistle. This means that the airstream goes over a block with a fixed edge that splits the air, which then produces the sound, compared to blowing sideways on a transverse flute, where you have to direct the airstream with your lip uh, and embouchure, meaning you direct the airstream, making it more wide or narrow. You simply need to blow into a mouthpiece, and then the air splits over this fixed edge. Most Native American flutes, compared to the recorder and tin whistle, have separation bef between the air chamber and the air splitting edge, where your air stream is directed uh, via a movable totem or block, this one here, which is wrapped with a leather tie here, so you can adjust it. Uh, and that makes, uh, it's called a slow air chamber, which makes it more uh, dynamic and expressive uh, compared to the recorder and the tin whistle. Uh, this flute has its origins in Native American culture, hence the name, but have since become hugely popular and spread all around the world because of its soulful and warm sound. Lesson 2. Flute Types and Keys there are several different types of Native American flutes, and all of them can come in different keys. The most common type is a six-hole Native American flute with a slow air chamber and a totem or block like this one. However, there are also five-hole versions, as well as special double and even triple chamber flutes, which are called drone flutes. And Regarding keys, I also want to point out something that makes this instrument stand out against most other open hole flutes. You see, the standard tuning of most flutes, like the Irish flute, Banzuri or tin whistle, is the major scale. On the Native American flute, it is instead based on the minor scale. This is a great aspect, in my opinion, since it makes playing emotionally way easier. And just like other flute families, the Native American flute is also available in a lot of different keys and ranges from very low to very high. So I have one here in A, so it's a, in the middle range. And I have on, one here is in low D, which is deeper, more mellow tone. And if you uh, get more passionate about this amazing instrument, which I hope you will, you will probably end up with more than one in the future. I already have two and I will get more very soon. Because this expands your options for tone and range. And if you get a double or triple cha chamber flute, you can also play those amazing haunting harmonies on this instrument. However, if I were to recommend a good starting flute, I would say a standard six-hole flute with a totem or block like this in the key of A, middle A, is uh, perfect for most people since it sits right in that middle range. A sweet, soft, mellow tone, but still not uh, too wide uh, between uh, the holes, so most people will be able to cover them uh, easily. Lesson 3. How do you play a Native American flute? So, playing the Native American flute is actually very simple at the basic level. In short, place your fingers over the holes to choose which note you want to play, and then blow air through the mouthpiece or hole up here. The fipple flute design makes producing a good tone much easier compared to a side-blown flute, which I've just shown, since you don't have to worry about shaping your lips and directing the airstream. Now, I'd like to point out one of the greatest things about the Native American flute compared to 
all other flutes. It has an incredible dynamic range. And this is because of the design with a very wide bore, so it's wide here. Uh, and the slow air chamber even further, like this one here. Uh, and this makes it wonderful for adding expression and emotion into your playing with dynamic swells, pulses, vibrato, etc. Like this. From soft to loud. Pulsing. And vibrato, which is basically a faster, more controlled pulse. Lesson 4. Native American flute fingering chart. So now you will learn something I find fascinating about the Native American flute. You actually have very easy cross fingerings for each note, so that you can play all 12 notes of music with only 6 holes. Which is actually amazing when you think about it and compare it, for example, with the Irish tin whistle. Now, I would like to also point out the only real downside of this instrument, which is that the great dynamic range and expressive nature comes with a small drawback, and that is that the Native American flute cannot really overblow into the second octave, which means that the note range is limited to around one octave plus a few extra notes above. So here is a standard fingering chart for a standard Native American flute with six holes, like this one. For every possible note in every key. So if you have a flute in the key of A, like this one, you simply look at the top row of notes here. And remember that the notes above the octave, so above note 13 in this chart, are what I call bonus notes. They can be very tricky to play on your specific flute, and the fingering may vary depending on the flute type and the design. But as you can see, you can play going up for every chromatic note, so... and so on, by simply having this uh, note skip or whole skipping cross fingering, so going from this top three to the next one, and then adding the note below it, and you get the uh, note in between those two in the scale, which gives you that huge potential for reaching all 12 notes of music on your Native American flute. I should note the exception, as you can see from the fingering shot, which is the lowest hole. Uh, since there is obviously no hole below it, you cannot do this hole skipping cross fingering that you do on all other holes here, like to play the in-between note, you actually need to shade that hole uh, by partly covering the hole to get those extra notes between this by doing this. Just lifting it ever so slightly and then half uh, shading it and then releasing it. And that is more advanced, so you will have to practice to get those notes clean uh, on your Native American flute. Lesson 5. Adding expression and emotion. One of the things that makes this instrument so amazing is the great range of dynamics, which gives you the ability to breathe life and expression and emotion into every single note you play. You can add expression and variation by shaping the attack of each note from a hard attack by pronouncing tu to start the note. So this, this means that uh, the note accent will be more clean and sharp and focused. You can do softer attacks by using a soft syllable like hu instead of tu. You can all even feel it in your hand. Hu, tu, tu, hu. There's a more a rush of air when you do the tu. Um, so hu sounds like this. Hu, hu. You don't say hu hu, but think that you pronounce it with your tongue and mouth. Compared to tu. All the way to playing legato, which means 
to connect the notes smoothly. And you do this by keeping the airstream flowing and simply changing your fingerings on the whole. So instead of tu or hu, you keep the airstream and then just uh, change the fingerings. You can then add emotion into your notes by changing the dynamics over time. And you do this by blowing softer or harder. Basically, you shape the expression curve for the duration of the note you hold. You can do crescendo, so going from soft to loud. Diminuendos, which is loud to soft. And pulses. And even vibrato by basically pulsing the airstream with not too, like, <laughs> but not breathing in. Um, so think about uh, almost freezing. <laughs> And uh, you can also do change the intensity of the vibrato and the speed. So, or faster. And you can change it over time of the note to really shape that, that emotion and expression. And you can also add emotion by using your fingers to bend or slide into or out from notes by slowly opening it up like this. Or slowly uh, covering in the opposite direction. Either completely, just uh, like I showed now, or partly, just bending up a bit. Or the opposite. So as you can see, the Native American flute is amazing for its emotional and expressive possibilities. Lesson 6. Special sounds and effects. So you can actually create special tonal effects on the Native American flute based on either controlling your airstream or using special fingering techniques. Let me share a few great techniques you can try out. First, if you roll an R as you play a note like this, you can create what on wind instruments, like a flute, is called flutter tongue. Compare this to a flat note, and then rolling R. Really cool special effect. Another technique is if you pulse with your fingers on the holes below the note you play, you can do finger vibrato or pulses. So if you play the top two holes closed, like this, and then you bounce here with your fingers on, let's say, the bottom two or three holes. You can do finger vibrato, depending on how much uh, you cover the holes when you bounce completely, it, it can become a, a thrill almost. So that is pulsing with the fingers. Another technique is to do a short, strong burst of air just at the start of the note and then go back to normal airflow. This works best at the bottom holes, uh, like this. So start very hard, like spitting out the air almost, and then immediately go back. Or the opposite is to start normal and then ramp up and then followed by a sudden stop. So soft, hard stop. Basically, you can cr experiment with shaping the airstream in various ways and trying different fingering techniques. And don't be afraid of trying the extremes. Be creative. This is a really fun part of playing your Native American flute or any instrument. Try playing it in different ways. Lesson 7. Tips on playing and practicing. I strongly believe that with every instrument you learn, you should make your journey as fun and exciting and rewarding as possible. Yes, of course, you should practice playing every note, including cross fingerings and half holding even. Yes, you should also practice all expressive techniques, dynamic range, vibrato, 
finger vibrato, and so on. Basically, you should always take time every now and then to practice a specific aspect or playing technique on your instrument. But, and this is the important point, I strongly believe that you should also spend at least as much time on simply playing your instrument for your own satisfaction. This is the only way you will keep your motivation and passion and dedication for the instrument. For example, I like to take my Native American flute with me into the forest or the park or the uh, anywhere in nature basically, sit on a tree stump and play for the birds and nature around me. It is an almost spiritual experience and I can highly recommend you to try it out. So go have fun when you play. Don't only practice the techniques. Make sure to always focus on the journey and the excitement of learning an instrument. Now, if you want to learn more, I have a full course in the link below on learning how to play the Native American flute with all the basics plus advanced techniques for adding expression and emotion. I also want to congratulate you for taking your first steps in learning how to play this amazing instrument. And I wish you good luck on your journey.